The 2023 Prius Prime is a shining example of Toyota's commitment to eco-friendly mobility. This plug-in hybrid continues to dominate the hybrid segment, boasting a myriad of improvements over its predecessors, such as increased power, electric range, and overall styling, just to name a few. In today's review, I'm gonna delve into the exterior features, the interior features, performance specs, and then we're gonna take it for a spin. So stick around to the end of this video to find out how much this Prius is gonna cost you. So the front of this Prius is different. Like it actually has some personality now and it's no longer the ugly friend in the Toyota lineup. So I'm glad that this vehicle got the much needed glow up that we've been expecting. And you can tell that by the bold hood lines that this Prius now has. It also has these LED headlights that kind of swoop across the front end and hook in and it gives it a really nice look and it really elevates the appearance and the aesthetic of this vehicle. As I look down, you have some uh, piano black trim as well. And then you have some nice uh, silver accents down below on the lip. I think all of those things just complement the overall appearance of this vehicle from the front end and it really makes it a head turner. A couple things I want to point out that I think a little weird is you have this little thing here on the uh, the windshield wipers. I don't know why you couldn't just make them both the same. It looks a little weird to me, kind of throws me off just by looking at it. And then the other thing is you have these LED headlights that are down below, and I think that those can pop a little bit more. I think they're just kind of hidden away. You have to really, truly look at those, and they don't really present themselves until it's actually dark outside. But other than that, I think it's pretty solid look. Um, at the front end. So let's go ahead and head to the side. So as we take a look at the side profile of this Prius Prime, I just want to point out a few things. So you have these illuminated front and rear side reflectors. You have this piano black finish that continues over the wheel well. You have these 19 inch alloy wheels. So gone are the days of those little baby rims that used to be on the old Prius. You have this uh, color keyed door handle that I think is really nice. The only problem is you lose the continuity of that here on the back end because they actually removed the door handle from the actual door panel and they moved it a little bit up. So if you wanna get into the back seat, you'll have to kinda of stick your hand in here and you'll have to press a button and this door will open. You'll be able to get into the back seat. If that doesn't work, so that means if the electrical fails on this vehicle, there's also a manual button here to the side that you can press down and that's gonna also uh, allow you to open the door and get in. This particular model has a sunroof um, and you can't really tell. Uh, we'll see that a little bit more once we get into the vehicle, but you can option into a solar panel on the roof. And if you option into the solar panel on the roof, you'll be able to leave this car outside and you're gonna get some additional electric range as you leave it in the sun. But this particular model has a sunroof, so therefore, no solar panel on the roof. Let's go ahead and head to the back. Okay, Prius, I see the lines coming back all the way to the rear of this hatchback. Then you have the compressed back end, so it's no longer boxy as its predecessors, and that kind of creates this lip over here that makes it look kind of like a spoiler, so I really like that. And then you have this light bar that spans across the rear end as well. You have Prius written out down below, and then you got that Prime badging down there, not to be confused with Optimus Prime. One of the things I want to point out really quickly is that this light bar is only available in the top trim, which is the XSE. So it's gonna be a clear light bar, but if you have a lower trim, you're gonna notice that this light bar is actually going to be red. So just keep that in mind, and that's how you know the top trim versus one of the lower trims. Uh, down below that, you have more of the rear parking sensors. You have this, again, this piano black finish just continues around the car, and it really does elevate the overall appearance of this vehicle. And then you also have this since 1997 badging back here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up, and I'm gonna go ahead and look inside, but let me tell you something. This is a hatchback, right? This is a Prius, right? There's not a lot of space back here, so don't think you're gonna make Costco runs in this thing. You're probably gonna have to fold the seats down. Uh, you do have some additional storage down below, but you can't really use that for anything besides the um, 
charging cables and maybe some smaller items. But one thing I'll point out is that you also have this rear cargo cover and then you're able to kind of unhook it and then it's foldable if you, in the event that you need to put it away if you have bigger items back here or, or anything like that. One other quick thing I'll point out is, I saw this on the front end as well, but it's also back here. It says hybrid reborn. So there's a lot of wording in this vehicle. Like I feel like they just kind of like put a whole bunch of Prius graffiti in here, but I think that's cool, but like, I don't know. They just, they just marked it up too much. Let me know what you think of the overall vehicle from what I've showed you so far. Uh, do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know what you think. But um, before we hop inside, I'm gonna tell you about the performance specs real quick. The Prius Prime is not only about being green, but also offers an improved driving experience. But don't get it twisted, it's still a Prius. The Prime offers a front wheel drive hybrid powertrain and a 2.0 liter four cylinder engine paired with an electric motor that produces 220 horsepower, which is 100 more than previous models, thus delivering improved acceleration and a fairly responsive driving experience. In all electric mode, the Prius Prime has a range of up to 44 miles without leveraging any gas, which is a step up from the 25 miles offered in its 2017 predecessor. Let's hop inside. Yo, Real talk, if I'm a DoorDash delivery driver right now or I'm a rideshare driver, I'm loving the interior of this Prius Prime. I will say that y'all got a major upgrade. I know y'all spend a lot of times in y'all cars and y'all cover a lot of ground and y'all gonna look real good doing it. Let's get into it. So. Couple of things that I wanna point out. So in terms of the interior accents, you're gonna see this red trim that's gonna permeate through the interior of this vehicle. That's gonna be here along the dash. That's gonna be here along the seats as well. As you can see, you have some ambient lighting in here, which is a really nice touch. And as I said before, they've really elevated the interior and the exterior of this Prius. You also have your JBL speakers that sound really nice when you're riding around and just listening to music, or even if you're just listening to satellite radio or just the regular radio sounds really nice. Additionally, one major change for the interior with this refresh is that the gauge cluster is no longer damn near on the hood at the center of the dashboard, but it's more so moved off to the side so the driver has their own instrument cluster that they can take a look at. And then there you're gonna have your speed, your miles per hour, a lot of your uh, various cruise control, lane keeping assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, all of those things as well your cruise control um, that you'll be able to see here on the screen the only thing about that is that I don't know why the car just did that. Um, the only thing about that is that those are those icons are kind of just sitting all over the screen and, and they don't necessarily go away. So I think it kind of detracts from the overall um, look and feel of the screen. It just looks a little bit too cluttered to me. And then moving on to the left-hand side, what you're gonna have is you're gonna see uh, more of your uh, other vehicle settings. You're gonna see how much charge you have, how much power you're using, uh, what song is playing, so all of those different things. And then if you come back a little bit and look right above this leather wrap steering wheel, which is really cool, might I add. I think this is, you know, a little bit more elegant. It has some red stitching in there to complement the trim. Uh, but there's a sensor here, infrared sensor, that is paying attention to what the driver is doing. And if you're not doing the right things, not looking where you're supposed to, the front screen is going to prompt you and let you know that you're not doing the right things. Another thing that you'll see there is so you'll see icons for stop signs as well as speed limit warnings that are going to present themselves um, on this instrument cluster. Moving on to the right, you're going to have this 12.3 inch infotainment screen. It's pretty responsive to the touch, I will say. The only thing that I don't like about it is that it doesn't have a home screen and it also, uh, the map doesn't load as effectively as it could. So I think that's an opportunity for this screen as well. Moving right along, if you look up, the light buttons have changed as well. So they're no longer actually buttons, but more of like a capacitive touch uh, kind of thing where you, you just kind of press that and then the light will turn on, you press it again, um, and then the light will turn off. So that is a pretty cool thing that they've added as well. More, more of a futuristic look, if you will. Moving right down, you have your climate control settings here on this uh, bar that kind of goes across. You have your heated and cooled seats and you have your USB-C charging ports as well as a 12 volt charger. You have a hidden compartment here and when you open that up, there's a thing in there that says hashtag hidden compartments. I think they graffitied this whole thing up. Uh, moving back here, you have your 
wireless charging port or wireless charging uh, cup, if you will, or slot. So you put your phone in there, it's gonna know it's in there, it's gonna charge it. There's also a power button in here. So if you want your phone to charge and you just set it in there, you're gonna have to press that button if it's not already depressed. A green light will pop up and then that'll signify that your phone is charging. For the gears, this is a little bit interesting because you have to kind of click it to the left, which puts it in neutral, and then push it up, that puts it in reverse. And then if you click it to the left and push it down, that's gonna put it in drive. There's another setting here that says B. Uh, that's more of like a manual setting uh, or a lower gear, if you will. So if you're going like downhill or uphill or anything like that, it kind of helps assist with that lower gear. Um, down below that, you have your drive mode settings. And then with the drive modes, you have uh, custom, sport, eco, a few other things. And then you have your auto EV HV, so you can basically uh, set it have the car basically set itself to um, hybrid or EV uh, driving or if you look below that there's another one that says or HV EV and then if you press that down you're able to kind of set that for yourself manually uh, last thing I'll talk about before we uh, jump into the back is this button here on the left hand side so you have a heating steering wheel in this vehicle but you also have this heated windshield as well so if you live in a cold weather state and it's, it's frosty, it's snowing, and your windshield wipers are stuck, you can turn that on and it's gonna basically heat up the, uh, the windshield and your wipers will be able to move. So I think these are all pretty nice touches in this vehicle, but let's go ahead and head to the back. All right, so on the rear of this Prius, as you can see, you have quite a bit of leg clearance, you have quite a bit of head clearance, L5.9 for reference, but you fit very comfortably back here. I think that this is probably gonna be the view that most of you are gonna have uh, while you're sitting in this Prius because you're probably gonna be riding in your Uber or your Lyft, you know what I'm saying? But a couple things I wanna point out. So there's gonna be uh, two USB-C charging ports back here as well as a plug-in uh, that you can use. So if you have your iPhone or anything like that, you can just go ahead and plug that in and you can charge up uh, along your ride. So I think those are uh, pretty good accents to have back here. You have the nice comfortable seats. They're also ventilated uh, back here. If you look up front, you have this sunroof. So I know I mentioned the sunroof before, but essentially as the passenger, I can close my little bit of sunroof back here and then there's also another piece of sunroof that's in there for uh, the front driver and passenger, which I think is a pretty cool design. But other than that, not really much to talk about back here. Let's go ahead and take this on the road. All right, so we finally driving this Prius Prime and see what it could do, baby. All right, so I will say that the Prime is, it feels good. Uh, it handles bumps really well. Uh, I will say that the steering is pretty responsive for a Prius. Uh, it's not gonna wow you or anything like that. As I mentioned before, it does zero to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds, but I feel like it's closer to seven, but in all electric mode, I think you can get closer to like 6.6. .6. But uh, I will say that on the highway, when you're at like a more of like a top speed, you're already at like 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, you can really like take off in this and, and I'm using that lightly because this is a Prius. You have all the uh, standard safety features in this so you're not gonna have to worry about anything like that. Um, I think overall this is going to be a good option for those consumers that don't wanna go fully electric quite yet um, and still have and not have the range anxiety or have to worry about charging infrastructure or anything like that. I think this is a happy medium for those consumers so that way you still get your you know over 500 miles or 400 miles of gas range you have your 44 miles of electric range which is a huge step up from its predecessors so i think all of these things combined are going to be great for the consumer that's not ready to commit to full electric just yet one thing i will say is that i'm thoroughly enjoying my time in the Prius. Would I buy one? Probably not. But if I was a rideshare driver or if I was a DoorDash driver or someone that's going to be commuting long distances, I think this is going to be the perfect vehicle for you. As far as price goes, uh, this Prius Prime XSE is going to set you back uh, around $39,170. And that is the price at the time of shooting this video. Add tax to that. That price is probably going to go up a little bit more depending on where you live. One thing I will say is that if you would like some more time with this Prius Prime, 
you can hit up my boy Muhammad on Turo, so that way you don't have to necessarily go to the dealership or anything like that. And that can afford you some more time to kind of get acquainted with the features and drive it around a little bit. And that's only if you're gonna be in the Bay Area. So I'll drop that link in the comments if you wanna check it out. And until next time.